Today I'm in Lavenir, Quebec, which is just east of Drummondville for one very special reason. Our spotlight today is on this 2018 Buick LaCrosse Avenir. It's like GM decided they wanted to throw me a bone, name a car after a town just close to us so that I could come here and feature the car in the town that it's named after. Now this is Buick's second vehicle to bear the Avenir trim. We featured the 2018 Enclave Avenir a little while ago and we actually loved the hell out of it. So we have high expectations for this mid-size sedan. We're going to be showing you all the features and everything you need to know. If you're curious, is Buick still a grandpa vehicle? And if this really does live up to the Enclave Avenir. Before we begin, if you really are interested in Buick and what the Avenir brand has to offer, I do suggest taking a look at the 2018 Enclave Avenir that we did back in January. You can click the link in the top of your screen for the card to get to that video. Now, the reason I say that is because this is an Avenir. It'd be one thing if they just called this the Buick LaCrosse CXL like they used to, but because they've created a sub-brand, much like the GMC Denali line, you would expect some consistency between the two. And that's one of the reasons why I was really excited to be able to get this car because I thought it'd be just as good, if not better, in a sedan as the Enclave Avenir was. But as we've been driving this over the past couple of days, I've realized that there actually is a lot missing on this car. Now, if I were an executive at GM, I would make sure that this car had consistency between the other products with that Avenir trim badge. First of all, it's missing a lot of the things on the front. The headlights, they're just regular Xenon headlamps. They're not LED. Also the fog light, which the Enclave did not have to be fair, it's a halogen fog light, and they're not very bright, so they're not very useful at night. Now, we do like the fact that they are front adaptive headlights, so they will turn as the wheel goes, and they also have cornering lamps. It's sort of the best of both worlds all put together, so the front visibility is certainly good. LED would have been better, and again, LED fog lights certainly would have been key, make it a little bit more consistent. Considering the Buick Enclave had the Evonik Acrolyte headlight system, this doesn't. It's just a regular Buick headlight system. Now you're also missing another 360 degree camera system, which on a vehicle such as this, we should be seeing it. Something like the Acura TLX can have it. Even the Mazda 6 now has a 360 degree camera. In fact, a lot of the midsize family sedans are getting that now. The fact that the Buick Enclave has it at the Avenir trim, but the Avenir of the LaCrosse doesn't is again an inconsistency that I wish GM would fix. Moving around to the side of the car, there is one consistency. You can open up the doors from all the handles. We do see that a lot with other GM products, but unlike the Enclave, no power folding mirrors. So again, you're missing out on something else. So maybe then I need to lower my expectations. Again, just like the Alfa Romeo Stelvio, I had super high expectations for that vehicle. And I've been hearing nonstop from Alfa enthusiasts that I am completely wrong about that car, despite it being my opinion that the car was disappointing. And I have to say that this is the same. I really was hoping this was gonna be a whole lot better. And it just kind of blends in. Not that the Enclave was a big standout vehicle, but I just find that this is more along the line of what your grandpa would wanna drive. And unfortunately, that's not good for Buick. They wanna change their image. And I'm just not seeing it. I don't see who would actually buy this car. Yes, all wheel drive is great, especially for a climate up here in Canada, it would be ideal to have a sedan with four-wheel drive but again a lot of the other vehicles in this segment are getting it first of all any other premium sedan has it you look at some of the other cars the 2019 nissan altima now is going to be offering all-wheel drive so it's not just the premium vehicles that have it now you need to do a little bit more to stand out and the fact that it is missing some features is a bit of a problem now again things that we're missing on the back here the reverse lights are just halogen bulbs the license plates are halogen bulbs. So again, those are small things. We've had people comment before that say, well, it's not really a big deal. But again, you're paying $56,000 for this car. I think that's something you should get on it. The Buick badge is your button to open up the trunk. I do like that. And I have to say that the trunk space on this car is phenomenal. You won't actually see it because we're filming on it, but the tripod that I'm using, there's a regular Manfrotto tripod, full length. It can fit without being collapsed at all in the back of this trunk. It is huge. Comes with a net and all your gear back there as well as the battery. So I do like the space on that. In fact, the space on this car is probably one of its biggest selling factors, much like the Volkswagen Passat that we featured. Rear legroom is incredible. So now let's jump in and take a look at what the inside has to offer. Now, we did mention this when we were talking about the Buick Enclave Avenir. The interior does feel a little basic, and I like that. I do like the simplicity of it. I do like the flow of everything. It is actually quite comfortable and spacious up here. Maybe it's not overly premium. I do like the stitched 
Yeah, I think it is leather. It is very hard, but you do have sort of a leather around here. There's a very subtle light that goes around the dashboard trim at night, sort of like an ambient light, but it's not really ambient lighting. But everything is straightforward. But again, you aren't getting all the features that you had on the Enclave. There is no video rear view mirror. That is the biggest feature that's missing from this car. You do have a sunshade in the back, but I find that the rear visibility is not that good, even if you put that sunshade down. I don't know why they don't offer that video rear view camera unless it's just for the SUVs but I do believe GM said that they are gonna start rolling out that system on other models, so that is missing. There is no wood trim on the top of the steering wheel here. The Enclave Avenir had it. Again, no power folding mirrors. There's no automatic high beams on this car. There were no automatic wipers on the Enclave, but they did have auto high beams. This car doesn't have it. So again, there's no consistency. It's one thing if you don't offer it, and I do understand. You know, we talked about it before and that the Buick Enclave Avenir was not a badge engineered car, something that General Motors had been pretty famous for for most of the 90s. Again, this is not a badge engineered version of something like the Chevy Impala or Chevy Malibu. But the problem is they aren't badge engineering. They're now forcing people to go up to the Cadillac brand by removing a lot of these features. Power folding mirrors is available on a lot of consumer cars, especially a lot of base model consumer cars. Things like auto high beams should also be included. So they're taking these features away because they want you to go up to the Cadillac and it's easy for GM. They're really one of the few brands that has a consumer brand, a premium brand like Buick, and then the luxury brand like Cadillac where they can say, hey, you know, you want some of the features, go with the Chevy. You want a little bit more, maybe you've worked your way up in life a little bit, you can afford a $57,000 car, go to the Buick. But if you really want all those little tiny features, the little details here and there that just make life a little nicer, you're gonna have to go up to the Cadillac. And I think that's unfortunate because if they added even a few of those things, and again, a few of the features to bring it up to the same level that the Enclave had, this would have been a much more enjoyable car overall, especially for the price. The car itself isn't bad, it's just for the price, you do lose out on quite a lot of the little features here and there. Now again, in terms of space, interior space here is quite good. You do have front heated seats and ventilated seats as well as massage. They're not overly massaging. They really just push on the back a little bit. There's no different profiles. It's just one, but I have to say that it is comfortable. The ride itself is also quite nice. It's quiet in here. They do have active noise cancellation coming out of the Bose system here, but you also have better insulation throughout the car. And I do find on the highways that it is noticeably quieter than other vehicles we've driven. I do like the black headliner. It helps to make this car's interior feel a little darker. And you can get that chestnut interior if you wanted to for the Avenir trim here. This is with the black one, but I do think that the chestnut would probably look better. Now talking about the back seats, there is tons of space. The legroom is quite good back there. You do have eh, some power outlets, but not the ones that we would expect. You have a regular cigarette outlet and a house outlet, which might be good if you have a computer, but there's no USB. So for the modern age person who uses a tablet or a phone it's actually going to be a little bit more difficult because the only usb ports there's two of them that are found in the center console where your armrest is so we have found that charging devices like a tablet is a little bit more difficult back there but legroom is great one of the things that we would have liked to see is side window sunshades again that's something that they seem to be reserving for the cadillac cts but overall the back seat space is quite nice and enjoyable especially with the panoramic sunroof you do have a lot of light coming in there now, one of the things that makes this car stand out a little bit is the way that it drives, the performance that it has, and overall, the comfort on the road. So let's take it on the road and now see if this car is designed for your grandpa, or if maybe it could be something that younger people like me might be considering. So when we drive something like this, we have to think back to the only other premium midsize vehicle we've driven, which was the Acura TLX. Now, I know we didn't drive the super handling all-wheel drive A-spec version of it, so I'm sure that it is nicer than the one that we had, but I do like the way that this car rides. I do like the interior feel of it, and I do like the space. In fact, the interior is quite quiet. Like I said, it uses active noise cancellation through the Bose system, but it also uses better sound insulation than you might have found on other Buick models before. It is quiet, especially along here doing 50. You, know, you do hear it a little bit. It's certainly not S-Class quiet, but when you get onto the highway, it does make a difference. You can tell that there is better sound management on the inside of this vehicle. It is quieter than you would find on other vehicles, especially other recent vehicles that we've driven that haven't had anything in terms of sound insulation. Now this does use a 3.6 liter, 315 horsepower V6 engine. We have not been ripping it because I picked this car up with seven kilometers on it. Uh, we are the first people driving this vehicle here in Quebec. So I have not been ripping it because even now at 701 kilometers, I haven't broken the car in yet. And I definitely don't want to damage the engine because I want the next set of journalists to be able to have a good experience with this car. But overall, it does drive well. We get onto the highway with no problem. The nine-speed automatic transmission certainly helps to be able to 
shift into the gears that you need and it's relatively smooth and you do help with a little bit on fuel efficiency. Keep in mind this is an all-wheel drive vehicle so it is going to be less fuel efficient than you would find on other vehicles but we have averaged as of now 10.6 liters per 100 kilometers that is a pretty good mix I'd say about 50-50 highway and city driving so you might get better numbers if you're doing more highway and you'll probably get a little bit better fuel economy too once the engine is broken in a little bit more but 10.6 isn't the worst but it isn't the greatest either but again we're not going to give it any points off just because the car is still too new for us to really have a good idea most of the cars we're driving at these points usually have a few thousand kilometers on them now there is a sport mode, we're not gonna use it, but it does work, it does help a little bit to get a little bit more power and keep the gears held just a little bit longer. So if you really do need that for whatever reason, you can certainly do it, but this car is not designed to be going fast. It really, again, back to that whole grandpa thing, it's the theme of this episode, you know, I think older people are certainly gonna enjoy the ride of this more. Yeah, younger people, if you really wanna get a Buick and you want something sporty, get the Buick Regal GS. It has the same engine, but it's a little bit smaller, so you'll go a little bit quicker with it if you want something sporty. But this really is a nice ride, I have to say. Really comfortable as we go around. It has a continuous variable active chassis system, so it helps to stabilize the cars you're going around corners, going over bumps. I do find it's not the same system that GM uses with their magnetic ride, but I do find that it is comfortable going over the bumps, going around the corners, and taking turns. It's actually quite enjoyable in this. I'm really impressed. Is it worth the $57,000 price tag, though? That's the only thing. I mean, I like the car, but there isn't anything about it that really stands out, and I think that's the biggest issue with this car. If Buick really wants to get people excited about their brand, they're going to have to do something more. And more they will. As I'm writing the script for this lacrosse, Buick Canada announced the 2019 Regal Avenir will be hitting the streets in the fall, bringing the total to three models under their top trim Avenir sub-brand. Perhaps Buick plans on keeping the lacrosse for its loyal customer base and focus on crossovers and sportier vehicles like the Regal to attract a younger demographic. But let's talk about the road this lacrosse is taking to get here, or for those of us here in Canada who can't take a little self-enjoyment, the Buick Allure. The first generation lacrosse was actually assembled here in Canada at the Oshawa assembly plant. Having a similar silhouette to the third generation we're featuring, the first gen was sleek for the mid-2000s, and based on this near 300,000 km example, has actually held up pretty well too. This generation was only available in front-wheel drive and offered a choice of either a V6 or V8 engine depending on the model year and trim. Despite shrinking an inch on the exterior length of the car, the second generation LaCrosse became Buick's flagship sedan and offered an all-wheel drive option. The second gen certainly stuck to Buick's new design language at the time, but when parked next to each other you can see the current model has a more European-inspired look and feel to it. But that brings us back to the car that we're actually talking about. Built on an extended version of GM's updated Epsilon 2 platform, the third generation LaCrosse's exterior is again an inch shorter than the first generation, but its 114.4 inch wheelbase is longer than the Infiniti Q70 and Acura RLX, which are both in the premium segment. That longer wheelbase is likely what gives it the added legroom in the back, making this mid-size sedan feel more like a full, despite the EPA's categorization of it. So let's go over the nitty gritty and find out what we really like and dislike about this new Avenir. First off, there's no doubt that the styling is nicer than previous generations, with a streamlined design that gives the car a much needed image boost. The addition of GM's excellent head-up display is a big plus for us. It was one of the features the Enclave Avenir was missing. The seating was comfortable and spacious wherever you sat, and sound insulation was top-notch for the segment. Finally, the ride and handling was great even with that continuously variable sport suspension and 20-inch rims option on this vehicle. But back to our initial thoughts on the Avenir naming. It's missing some basic features from the Enclave that we hope to see on this vehicle. Small details like the lack of automatic high beams or rain sensing wipers is a must for a premium segment flagship sedan. The lack of GM's video rearview camera, even as an option, feels like a missed opportunity to get this tech in front of more users. Also, the use of halogen fog lamps is a letdown, as it gives the front end of this vehicle a base model look. Now, there's always room for improvement when it comes to any vehicle, and I think GM is working in the right direction if they want to make Avenir a success for Buick. They just need to ignore the bean counters and deliver a vehicle that can surprise and excite. 
And that's the problem in the sedan market right now. A car like this LaCrosse is very good, and I enjoy driving it. But as buyers continue looking at crossovers and SUVs, being very good just isn't enough. A sedan needs to be great in order to sell, especially at that $56,000 price point. Greatness is what will sell a sedan like this, and it's almost there. Thanks for watching this episode of Test Drive Spotlight on the 2018 Buick LaCrosse Avenir. What do you think about this sedan? Will younger buyers be interested in it, or will only Buick's loyalist customers be trading in their previous allures for it? Let us know in the comments below, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Until next time, take care.